Music has always been a really important part of my life, something I'm very passionate about. I know it makes a real difference to people and it makes a real difference to me. But over the last few years, I've been gaining some real new understanding about what that means in practice, the difference that music makes to people, uh, and a language and understanding around that. And there's been a couple of really significant bits of learning for me. So the first one uh, is some work that's been done by Dr. Teppo Sakamo from Finland. And what he's done is he's taken the various different parts of the brain that are affected by taking part in listening to music. And he's separated those out and he's mapped across the brain all the different areas of the brain that are stimulated by the different elements of music. So for example, he talks about uh, the variation, he talks about harmony, he talks about the attention that we have to give, he talks about the episodic memory, he talks about memory function. And his slide shows the different parts of the brain that are being stimulated when we're listening to music, taking part in music, right across the brain using those different, different colored dots. What that shows to me is that you have a, a stimulation of areas of the brain that are in uh, people living with dementia are being impacted upon or affected or diminishing. So as cognitive function is reduced through the advance of dementia and parts of the brain that are attacked as the result of the advancement of dementia, there are other parts of the brain that are stimulated through listening to and taking part in music that remain intact. Uh, and it offers us an understanding of the potential of music to remain as a means of communication and connection uh, beyond the loss of other forms of communication such as speech. So the second piece of uh, really important evidence for me, and this, this was like a light bulb going on in my head when I heard this, is a piece of work that's been done by Professor Robin Dunbar from Oxford University. And he talks about where music sits in the evolutionary process of, of human beings. So the starting point is the acceptance that essentially human beings are, are apes. We're, we're very sophisticated apes, but we're apes nonetheless. And that all apes, ideally, in order to function and, and to function best, need to be in social groups. And for a social group to function, you have to attend to that. You have to take time to make sure that social group works. Now, the more sophisticated the ape, the larger the social group. So, for example, a chimpanzee can function with around 15 other individuals in the social group. Uh, a, a human uh, needs around 150 people in their social group for, for the ideal functioning number. So in order to attend to the bonding of that social group, we have to take time to do that. So a chimpanzee can do that. They can do that through grooming because essentially, you know, in, in a day you can get around 14 other individuals. And actually, I don't know if you've ever tried, but uh, trying to groom 149 other individuals in a day, although that might be fun, is actually impossible to achieve. We're far too busy doing other things, such as inventing fire, updating our status, etc. So as we evolved, became more sophisticated, our social groups got larger, we evolved new ways of attending to the bonding of those social groups and making sure they're functioning. And we did three things over large evolutionary scales of time. And the first thing that we did was, uh, was laughter. And you can connect with and bond with a lot of other people through laughter. And in fact, we see apes using that as a means of connecting to their social group. Um, the most recent thing we did in evolutionary terms um, was spoken language. And that's a very powerful means of connecting with people and, and ensuring people understand you and relate to you. But in between those two and predating spoken word uh, by some large evolutionary scale of time, is the use of sound modulation, modulation of the voice, essentially singing and music. So it predates spoken language as a means of us feeling part of and connecting to our social group by some significant piece of evolutionary time. Uh, what that means is that, that music is, is essentially one of the fundamental parts of our evolutionary understanding of how we feel safe, how we feel connected, how we communicate to our social group a really important understanding uh, around the role of music in place of the role of spoken language, again, as we're talking about older people losing that function in the later life journey through the advancement of dementia.